welcome back everyone to Meta HSE. I'm still Midnight, still joined by Mendrix for our second game of the day. That will be Cabramatta High School on the blue, facing off against their opponents of St. Moron's College in the red. And this is looking to be quite an exciting game because these two teams are going to be relatively high up on the standings. And with playoffs looming, Mendrix, the winner of this game, I think it's fair to say will take quite a bit. And that's that's really what comes down to it now. It's time to rise up to the occasion. If you, you haven't come here prepared and ready to roll, well, fortunately, uh, you're not really going to get another chance. So I'm very interested to see how it all plays out. Yeah, see how that one runs as we are just getting everyone into lobby, which means it shouldn't be too long before things cook off, hopefully. Um, and fingers crossed get, on that one. <laughs> fingers crossed on that one. Though knowing me, I've probably jinxed it in some variation. It wouldn't. It wouldn't surprise me whatsoever. So, but hopefully, getting into this game again, it should be very interesting because these teams. This is, of course, for the Division One New South Wales ACT in Queensland region, and these teams with finals. I think finals are starting on next week. The yep. final week here is really, really important for most teams. For example, we've seen Canberra Matter High School. In quite a few team, quite a few games, I should say, and they look like a really strong competitive team. So I'm really interested mm -hmm. to see how they come into this final week because this final week is sort of the setup to playoffs. You do well here, it's going to look a lot better for your playoffs run. Correct. And uh, another thing that comes into it as well is that I feel Cabra Matters High School. I've been a victim of a bit of a target ban, specifically looking at Godrius. I feel every time I see this guy go into play, <laughs> his Darius has been banned away every single time, and that ends up being a bit of a beneficial, you know a bit beneficial for you as time goes on because one you in a, in a competition format you're forced to play different champions that begins to play a pretty a pretty big role as time goes on because now your champion pool gets a bit bigger uh you end up playing different players in ranked or different champions in rank which means if you do take away the darius eh not that much of a big deal. I have been playing, or I've been the victim of this target ban for the past two months, one month, however long the competition's been going for, other competitions as well. And now that I've got a different champion in my backpack, I can play Renekton, I can play Quinn, I can play, mm -hmm. you know, insert champion name here. All of a sudden, that Darius ban is nowhere near as valuable as it used to be. And you yeah, you get, you get these people who end up being, or you get these players end up being a lot better in terms of the, uh, a, a lot better in terms of their champion pool. So I'm pretty happy with the scenario here for Godrius because, to be honest, he's become a more well-rounded player because of it. Yeah, and so you need to be a bit more well-rounded coming into this. So, um, and of course, we've seen them in before. They pulled out stuff like the Jacks in the past as well. Yep. So they've got a lot of options that they can run with in the top lane. But it's not just the Godrius that we've seen do really well. The mid, as well as even the bot lane, have stepped up in their own right. So it'd be very interesting to see how that goes. Unfortunately, guys, there is a little bit of a delay. One of the players is still getting into the lobby. So hopefully, it won't delay us by too long. But it mm -hmm. will, of course, mean that we need a couple more minutes before we do get into the match itself. And I suppose with this little bit of extra time, we can talk about some of the more... I suppose we can look at trends in the meta, right? And I specifically yep. want to ask about stuff like the AP junglers. The I know, Rumble is still quite popular. I know yep. Morgana has just vanished off the face of the earth. Thank God. Um, <laughs> what are the other sort of... Other these cheeky junglers. I she think. was so never meant to be thing. there. She was never meant to be there. The riot's just like, what does she do? No, she's a mid. She's a mid to support. That's all she is. She's she can't be a jungle as well. But she's so much fun. It's like no, it's it's just you know what you know why she can't be there. It's because it's of that disgusting. binding. That binding is just too much. Like the fact that you can put it on a jungler. Like the idea sometimes that you need to have the laner set up the jungler for the gank, right? That's the point of it. When you've got a Morgana who can literally just, like, waltz into lane, nonchalantly, and it's just kind of like, yeah, so there's a gank happening right now, guys. This is going to be great. And it's just like, no, this is supposed to be set up. This is supposed to be a giveaway. It, like, it, it literally is that point in time when there was, like, Predator Hecker in where you see him charging down from, like, the lane. You're like, oh, I'm guess I'm dead, you know, at that point. That's literally what, like, Morgana is when she's just... I'm going to stroll in. It's, gonna, it's a beautiful day at the moment. It's currently 22 degrees at this point in time. Uh, we do have a bit nice weather. And there's a binding. And you're dead. That's literally what the Morgana sort of trend was. And that's why, you know, she needed to cop a little bit of a, a little bit of a takedown directly afterwards. Rumble, different different setup, right? He's got a slow. The 
the ultimate's really big in those team fights, not something that you want to be using in a in a standard straightforward gank. And so you can see there's a little bit more counterplay coming into it. Yes, it's a bit harder for the other junglers to deal with. That's the idea of it being strong versus weak. Yeah. Yeah, like this. Um, again, apologize, guys. There is still a bit of a delay. I'm not entirely sure. I think everyone has joined the lobby now. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Hopefully, we'll, if it, if that is the case, we'll be uh, starting soon. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, maybe. Maybe we'll in the near future. Hopefully, I I, I don't know. It's still in the possible. Still in the yeah, it's in the it's in the yeah it's in the air right now. It's just I I I don't know. I would like it to start midnight. Would you like it to start? I mean, I wouldn't mind I would just like sitting here. Start. We could just sit here and have a chat for the next half now. I'm, I'm totally cool with us doing that. How you been, man? Oh, pretty well. Uh, lockdown's yeah. finally ending down here, which is always a little bit of a nice thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, uh, for what Riders is, Riders is ending for you, it's ramping up for us. <laughs> 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 no, yeah, New South Wales. Just don't do it. Just... It always, it's never going to end. It's, it's just People, the, the wear your thing. masks. Okay, wear your masks. Don't need to go into work. Don't go to work. It's this simple. is your public. This is your public service announcement. I public know service here. announcement, right, guys? I, wear you your masks. You don't need to go exactly right. Just wear your masks. Make sure you keep that one point five meter distance. Drink plenty of water. Watch your posture. All the things that we need to worry about. Hmm. Like I understand that this is. You guys did come here to listen and watch some League of Legends, but you know we figured. While we've got you stuck here, we, as a hostage, here? we might why as well. Uh, why, why are you? I mean, are they hostages? Oh. They could. They could just leave. I mean, <laughs> yeah, true. I think we. I think we just lost like five people. With us doing that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we are now finally into game metrics. It is time to begin. Of course, this is the New South Wales ACT in Queensland game mm -hmm. of the night. Canberra, uh, Canberra Matter High School on the blue. Facing off against St. Moran's College on the right. And we'll see how that takes itself as the first couple of hands coming through here. Aurelia, Lee Sin, and Samira, all very strong champions. And what I really like about these particular champions that are being taken away is they're all pretty much playmakers. They all have the ability to bounce around. Uh, a lot of it does come from the players being able to strut their stuff. Uh, there's the Godrius ban that we were expecting coming on through. So uh, poor old Darius will not be making his way onto the rift. And again, a bit of respect from the players in, in the sense of that. Again, a bit of the targeted banning as well at the same time. I have seen Shirak pretty do, do some pretty mean work on that Samira at the same time. And of course, the fact that we've gotten rid of the Aurelia, really a bit of a flex ban, the fact that Golangoon and Godrius could be uh, piloting that in either the top or the mid lanes. Yeah, you know, the Darius ban coming out, surprise, surprise, Godrius. Not gonna be happy about that one, but again, we know they've got other champions in their wheelhouse. Ah, the Vladimir like ban's a bit of a, bit of a fun one. That means someone's been practicing. And now, for the camera matter, what do they want to lock in here for themselves. I know, so, depending on who you ask, some people yep. say either you rush a jungler here, or some people even say some marksmen are worthy to grab first pick. I think it all comes down to you, who your priority laners are, and as you can see here, the Jax is what's picked up, and it is because you can tell with those two, when you look at the bands being actually targeted away here, Aurelia, Darius and Vladimir, it means that they're trying to chip away at Godrius' champion pool. And of course, um, that means that he's been affected by this man. It pushes him onto that champion. He wants to be on something that he's comfortable because he is one of the priority picks. Everyone else can sort of sit back and relax. We have seen Godrius do some pretty crazy things on the Strax early. Uh, what ends up, ends, up, ends up hitting or hurting him was the fact that the really that line that the lane, uh, lane assignment so it ended up hurting him trying to come back for the team sometimes it is better just to stick to your lane and keep pushing that pressure in and split up a team especially when they do have a pretty damn mean uh, composition coming into it which when i look at things being said and done here right now i'm feeling that is a pretty mean team fight competition that's actually coming out here yeah, so, uh, and the Java knockup, yeah. Cataclysm, and Final Breath comes in on top of that, because, of course, there was a knockup on that. There is a lot coming in already, and if you pair that up with something like an Orianna in the middle lane, that's going to be disgustingly strong, Yeah, if that's indeed put together. But, yeah, fun for fun, it's going to lock in their Zed once again. We saw this last week, um, I'm pretty sure, or in the weeks oh, previous. Stability. And Diana, who's typically ironically seen in the jungle right now, I suspect that is going to go for Go Lego. You could possibly put the Jax in the jungle. I have seen Jax perform relatively well. I'm um, definitely not the strongest. I feel 
Jarvan definitely has the edge against that, so that, that's one thing we could take into account. But um, I, I'm expecting it to, probably, to be a Diana jungle and, of course, Zen in the mid lane, Jack's top. Yeah. That's the way it should be, but we'll find itself out. Again, I kind of think everyone's just locking in for themselves. They've done this before, so yep. it wouldn't surprise me too much if that is the case. Is the final lock in is, of course, the Nico coming in from the side of St. Moron's for uh, pick three. And, of course, barrel number two. There it is, the Ezreal, the Jin, just really strong champions in the bottom lane. I am a little surprised that Gwen has been sort of let pass. She is ridiculously powerful if you know what to do here. So mm -hmm. probably the players just haven't had time to practice that to a level. Oh, I would say play. that's the case. Because I mean, especially when you do see it in competitive play, it's because they've pretty much played every champion and they know them like the back of their hands and they mm. understand how they need to go in terms of playing that champion and also how what they need to do when they're um uh, playing as that champion so those little things come to it when you're not comfortable with that with it that means that gwen will just sit back and relax and because she's such a new champion to the mix of things there's a, few, a lot of a lot of things that new players need to explore whereas professional players have already gone through and pretty much done every done everything you could say with that champion in every sense of it in terms of okay cool what sort of limit testing could will she die here will she survive here um does it does her her ability actually block this as well can i use this in this initial way is it like this every question has been asked and answered and of course our players haven't had the opportunity to that but we are going to get to see the new Mundo come into play. Can I ask, where is this Mundo going? Unless this is like Yasuo AD carry. I'm I'd say, curious pro, pro, where this turns You could out. put Nico support and then throw Mundo top and Yasuo mid. Okay, so there's another possibility. I'm just... The Mundo threw me. I was not expecting a Mundo coming it, in. It could here. be a Mundo support too. I mean, let's go back to season two. Why not? I mean... No, I don't want to see that. I mean, I do, but I don't. Um, on the other side, Jinx, I love to see that. Yep. A, I love Jinx as a champion, so I'm really excited to yep. see how Stonicism goes with that. And Shoot, I wonder if Suits is going to go with something defensive like a set. or oh, yeah, Nautilus works just as well yep. there. And a lot of crowd control, a lot of damage coming in here for the Canberra Matter High School lineup. And now, what do you lock in here? Okay. Okay. Now I have no idea where everything's going. So this could be Sin. No, it could be um Syndra Nico bot, or it could be Syndra Yasuo bot. I, I feel like Yasuo it could be Yasuo Jarvan because Jarvan has a knock up in their kit. It could be, but then who's the jungle of Mundo? Mundo Mundo jungle with Nico top lane. Okay. Well, it looks like it's going to be Syndra Yasuo. Now, I yeah. did see a Syndra in one of my games literally today, and it was disgusting. Because it legitimately just took over the bottom lane and the AD carry is like, well, I don't have to do anything. I can just farm. So that could I... be the case here. And a Syndra actually works as a support because what you do is you're not looking to save uh, your your balls that you drop down to look for that. You can actually just throw them everywhere in the support role. And the idea is that when you drop them down and you do, do use your scatter of the week, um, that basically pushes out a massive cone AOE stun in that direction. Mm -hmm. And that's what you'd look to do is just set those balls up uh, preemptively beforehand uh, the moment everyone is in position you just basically shoot fire and it's like a shotgun goes off and stuns everyone yeah it's very strong i must say i love a good syndra play i used to be i spent three months playing syndra in the mid lane because i adored the champion's mechanics of actually like yes everyone says ha ha press star that's syndra in a nutshell and that's to a degree, it's not let's wrong. be honest let's be honest it's that's not okay wrong. like it's a hundred <laughs> so i got yeah we've got six four okay excellent ah uh. How do you like them? Apple? Yes, but the skill in the Syndra isn't the ability to one-shot someone. It's the ability to land the stun and do it so that it is practically undodgeable. If you time the Syndra correct, you can actually use your E before you've used your Q and get basically an undodgeable knockup unless you are really proactive about it. Like yeah, I, was about to use your, I was about to use your full name there, but I'm going to say Midnight. Midnight. <sighs> Stop making up excuses for your simple champion, okay? <laughs> I don't even play Syndra anymore. What, what is this flame? I don't deserve this. I, thought I, played... I, needed to hit, I needed to hit you with it. it has, it's been a while since I've done a midnight roasting. Fair enough. I mean, you, you can roast me the fact you, that you can roast me. Come on, roast me back, man. Roast me back. Um, hit me. I'd, I'd roast you, but you're not something. relevant enough to roast. So, um... Oh! <laughs> scathing. You didn't even turn the barbecue on. Yeah, I'm not good at insulting people when I'm when I'm caught off guard, unfortunately. Not not one of my Fair talents. Enough. One of my talents is never shutting up when it comes to League of Legends. 
Um, and that's, that's kind awesome. of the talent that we're here for. Hopefully. Hey, it's definitely useful. I mean, we're here right now. We're talking about it. You've definitely seen you um, around there. It's becoming a it's becoming a thing, man. Midnight, the man of the chat. Uh, yes, let's go with that one. Is looking a minute before we get into the game. <laughs> Come on, just come, you give me the back and forth here, man. I'm, try, I'm, I'm panicking. Don't recoil not... into your shell like that, come on. I will turtle this out, I will turtle this out like it's a ranked game, mate. Don't you worry. All right, fair. Okay, um, fine, do it. Okay. Do it, do it. I will do it. Okay, we've got a minute before we get into game. Before we go for a little break, before we dive into game number two, Mendrix. Yep. Where is first blood? Who is getting the first blood in this game? Ooh, tough one. Um... I'm I'm gonna give it to Jinx. I feel it's it's pretty rough to yeah, yeah yes Yasuo Syndro can be uh pretty damn hard to deal with, but that early stage they need to get their first three abilities before they start really becoming relevant. I feel like you know if Nautilus manages to land a good hook, Jinx will be able to just destroy them. So that's where I feel it's gonna go. That, that that's why I'm putting money on the Jinx. All right, so this is in first blood in the bottom lane. We'll find out if Mendrix is accurate. Or if Mendrix is still dreaming, guys, don't go anywhere. Game number two at Meta HSC is on the way very shortly. On Summoner's Rift here, the Mundo in his fancy car, just sort of. I think he's driving. He's, he's, he's not like, moving. He's not moving, mate. He's, I mean, he's in the oh, fancy there car. Goes. There, there he goes. goes. Yeah. Woo! Oh, <laughs> woo! He's moving. There he is. He's on his way. Go to LA. Go, buddy. That's it. Oh no! Why did he stop? Okay, cool. He's still going. Good, good, good. He's gonna drive that car as fast as you possibly can. How yeah. good would it be, right, if you get fast enough that he he just puts the car on, right? Oh, look at that little strut! He's got in everything. Oh my god, he's a he's a, he's a bona fide businessman. That guy is out there. And he's gonna go sell some houses right now. That's what he's planning to do. He's like, yes, yes, you can you can come see the viewing, but you need to come here very quickly. It's it's gonna be off the market any second. I've got someone putting a bid on right now. That's how he gets everyone through the door. Yeah, you know, Money Man Mundo gets everything done up there in the top lane. It'll be very interesting to see how that goes um, up against the decks. Godri is, I'm sure, is comfortable on the Jags, but how comfortable can you be against a like to a Mundo who, I'm sure, many people are still sort of. I know I'm still kind of wrapping my head around Mundo whenever I fight him in lane because he just sort of beats me to death, and I've never really been able to work out well why he beats me to death. I just sort of, I walk in the lane, Mundo starts laughing at me, and then I'm dead. I was like, okay, well, this is top lane again. 
So. I think one of the things that like Mundo has going for him is he is in the sense of it is just just a flat stat stick. That's like literally what he is. Um, so when he is a little bit of ahead, it becomes just menacing because at that point he's like, well, now I just outstat you and there's nothing you can really do about it. Um, yeah. Obviously with the changes, um, with the new Mundo, the rework, Mondo is that it's um, not as menacing as before, but obviously it can still be the case and it can still happen because that's what happens when his ultimate is online. He's able to just go boom. Now I'll stat you with the fact that I have this little bit of an advantage. It's just rough to deal with. And there's that little jump in I was talking about. Yeah, so but shoots the one top in the worst oh, end but, of that one because oh. look at shoots Keystone. He is not running the standard aftershock. They have gone for the Guardian instead, which I really don't like in this matchup here because you kind of need the extra statistics. Yeah, I don't agree with it as well. Wow, Kansu doing a really good job as well, just beating away um, Godrius at this point in turn. You can tell he missed the stun, which is what was the big issue there. And oh the Shirk's going in. Exhaust drop down, barrier coming down to Solicism, but will there be time? But Shoot is now in danger because, well, they can't run fast enough. Heal comes out as well, and the flash, everything coming out. One more hit will do oh, it. Attack. The burn coming out as well from the Syndra. That is why you take Scorch. Yeah, I can... I I think one of the things that we need to also take into account here is that Shoot should definitely have Aftershock. That would have made a big difference. He would have taken so much damage, and that's allowed them the ability to charge once they hit that level 2. And Look, you know, I thought it was going to be the Jinx that gets that level 2 first, but unfortunately, it seems that uh, Nautilus not bringing the correct arsenal to help out that teammate. Yeah, it's a bit rough down in the bottom lane now, and... The pressure that's been lost by Jinx and Nautilus is pretty disastrous because now, you know, the punishment you could give onto a Yasuo, the fact that he's got no range, kind of doesn't matter when Syndra can set up the stun and you're just not in the position to fight them. So, uh, Stoicism and Shoot are going to play super safe for the next little while as Godry is doing oh, aggressive Chris, top lane here. Khan might just die. One more hit will do it and Godry has picked up a solo kill in the top lane. Yeah, there was a difference there. When he's able to land, he's stunned, he's able to get in. He charged up a massive amount of damage because, of course, there was all those minions auto-attacking that just went through, went right through, which means he got a full empowered ability off the back of it. And that means that Khan, not respecting the fact that with all those Conqueror stacks that Godrius had built up previously, was able just to blow him up at 12 stacks. And that really comes down to where you need to be monitoring not only what's happening in, in terms of the um, what abilities you're putting onto him and how deep those Conqueror stacks are as well. You need to also be monitoring where those cooldowns are at because he was able to use that in conjunction with the Corrupting Potion to really put out some mean damage and get that solo kill. Yeah, and we've seen what happens when Godrius gets ahead. We've seen it before. It was uh, Nightmare Fuel. So to see it happening once again could be a little bit of a problem here. We'll see. I'm going to curious which item... Godrius goes away because again, I talked about it last time we saw this, which is I, I think he's going to try Triforce. Yeah, I feel like the Defense Thunder is good, but does it compete to the raw stats of the Triforce? The answer is obviously, according to you, no. Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm also looking at the fact that I mean, oh, I, mean, I think I think it's the Triforce here because again, if you you just want to outstat the Mundo, if you're able to do that, then everything is good in that sense of the matter. Also, with the changes, I mean, they did change Triforce up around I think it was a couple months ago, which really what brought it back to favor and. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's the other items still have their, their place, but when it comes down to you just saying, hey, what's going to be the correct decision going forward, you're always going to be safe with Triforce. Mm, it's hard to mess it up with a Jax. staple of a Jax build. Yep. For like, past 10 years? years. Now. Yeah. Past 10 so, years. You literally always build it on Jax. Yeah. And uh, at least on the bright side, for the side of Zephyrus, yes, their top lane got solo killed, but they secured the first dragon at not even six minutes into the game, which is very nice to see because Scott Juice has a little bit of a fit on the screen. Um, it does start the dragon stacking game, which right now is just really important. If you can get those early objectives, if you can get online with the jungle objectives, it makes the mid to late game so much easier for you and means that if you're ahead, the other team can't stall out nearly as well. It's not only that, I honestly feel that the Ocean Drake is one of the biggest value pickups that you could possibly go for. And oh because it gives you that sustainability. That's a really nice win wall. That stops Shoot from getting in. So, very good reaction time coming out of Shirik there. But again, coming back to that Ocean Drake, the fact of the matter is, is that it's going to really help out Khan specifically because, because Godrius is being very oppressive here. 
But um, part of it also comes down to that idea of, yeah, having this ocean drake means that everyone gets to sustain, and getting it earlier means it will actually have a, a bit of a on-floor effect into the rest of the game. Yeah, and especially for someone like Khan who's just getting bullied, the free health, it's always a little bit welcome here. And even in the lanes that you're winning, let you means you can play aggressive and not get as heavily punished here, um, as we're seeing... Uh, Shira does get a little bit of views on the Yasuo, but has got a nice CS lead over the Jinx, which is kind of what you'd really need locking in something like a Yasuo, because Yasuo is especially in the bottom lane, to me at least, a very hit and miss. Either is the typical Yasuo of 10 and 0 or 0 and 10, yep. and in this case it doesn't look to be like the 0 and 10 with the level of aggression that we're seeing out of them so far. Well, it definitely seems to be a hit at the moment. You are able to get a bit of a CS lead, especially when you are playing a melee heavy bot lane, or not really just melee heavy, but a melee carry. Uh, they do tend to get bullied around by the AD counterpart. The other thing to take into account here, it's really necessary for Yasuo to be getting that gold lead because he is stat dependent in the sense that he needs to get certain items or he needs to be at a certain level before he really starts to take over a game. Uh, you do lose out on the on the level side of things by sharing experience with the Syndra. So that does mean that he needs to be up in that gold to be relevant um, at the point that you want Yasuo to be relevant. Hmm. Well, so far the Yasuo is sitting on more gold than the Jinx, but only by 200. I think for fun is invading Haru, but I'm not so sure that invade is going to work because the rotation from the mid laners should have come in first from Ruins. Instead, he just backed off. I think that's the right call here for the Zed. You just can't risk going down early because if you start getting snowballed against as a Zed, typically doesn't go well for you. Completely agree in that sense of it as well. I mean, I, I mean, yes, yeah, fun that I'm seeing a Zed jungle, and I think part of the reason is because of is the itemization changes as time goes on. The fact that you're able to actually get a little bit more sustain out of it means you see a lot of different drums. Wow, that's some damage. That's uh, go, oh. go tried, but unfortunately, Nico specializes in close range combat with that Pop Blossom, and the extra Ignite may have had something to do with it. Yeah, really no respect from Golaguna as well. His Harama, though, making a play. Godrius is engaging with no right to Khan. Flashes the safety that Godrius should go down. A couple more hits will do it, but not actually gonna die. Survives with no HP, basically. Oh, and oh, Maru oh, oh. cannot clean it up. This is one of those cases where your teammate says, go in, don't worry, I've got you. And I feel like <laughs> Paul for fun didn't actually have him, but Godrius completely trusted the fact afterwards. And even if something is a bad idea play, as long as you do it together as a team, you can make it work. And my God, did that work of Haruma just played a little bit better in terms of that micro play. He mechanically would have been able to get in there and actually get that, teal, that kill, but Godrius was able to sit back, get the sustain, obviously use that corrupting potion as well to keep everything coming across, and that is going to be one hell of a strong Jax as time goes on. Not only that, it's good to obviously get this Zed rolling as well. That's something that he desperately needed, and that means that this team is going to be able to uh, make some plays happen elsewhere around the map, because they do need it, because their bot lane's falling behind, and their mid lane's falling behind. Yeah, I feel like the bottom lane is the more um, urgent of the two areas that need that backup from uh, Pwned for Fun, honestly. I feel like a Jinx, you, while, yes, Jinx gets strong at that three item mark, I really think that you shouldn't just sort of let the lane play itself out. There's a 20 CS difference between the two bottom mm -hmm. lane players, and you might as I don't see a harm in ever getting Jinx online a little bit earlier, considering the fact that Shoot and Solitism are clearly going for a hyper, hyper carry Jinx with the barrier, the heal on the support, and the Guardian as the selected keystone instead of the standard aftershock. So I would love to see that. And we are seeing Pwn for Fun on the bottom sides of the map, but that might also be because Dragon has spawned and we both know that Maroon's College is looking for something there. It's the two top lane trading out Godrius once I'm again, trading it. it out, but he doesn't have the ultimate there to fight off against the healing Dr. Mundo. And there is no healing reduction available for the Jax. The other thing also is here is that we've picked up the Bramble Vest for Khan. So Khan very confident going into those fights. But as you can see here, there seems to be some concession oh for this dragon. Stole it away there and the rest of the team piling in there. Pop bottom lands on multiple members. But Solacism is left untouched on the back line there, but it may not matter. The Jinx does not have the damage output to a run. As the two top laners did TP in, it is a scattered fight. Godrius and Gola go 
Oh, uh, so they're still poking around here, but Godris is stuck with nowhere to run to. Will go down. Gola Go will go back to base courtesy of the Yasuo Samurai Sword. And that was a bit of a disastrous fight there for Camper Manor. They stole the dragon, but lost three members to do so. And that is the advantage of having most of your members there first, being the first team behind that 8-4. The fact that you were able to get ahead of the rest of the team, put your members into play, they're scrambling to try and get in there and then directly afterwards salvage the fight. Yes, they managed to get the dragon, but they lose so much more in turn. Look at all that plate gold coming down and, of course, giving away a number of golden kills and experience. They lost so much tempo trying to get something back when really sometimes it is better just to let it go. Yeah, I like the idea of the contest, but once you stole it away, I feel like that's as far as you should extend yourself to. But instead, they committed to the fight, didn't go too well, and now a bit under 2,000 gold in the lead in our favor, St. Rose, over Cabramatta High School. And it does net, I think the interesting thing for uh, the mid lane Nico is the first fully completed Mythic is going to be the Protopelt. Which, I'm not surprised it's the protobelt, but with the fact that the Diana is already struggling in this lane, it's going to go even worse for them. And that was also the idea of that, yeah, I mean, mid lane is a linchpin for everything to come across. The fact that they had so many members available before was because that Nico was able to do so well before and get that solo kill out, put that pressure in and go for it. Uh, Godris doing some pretty good damage there at the same time uh, until that ultimate does come down so you can see wisely backing away but that means that it is going to be down and I would be starting to call up my jungler for a gank just on the basis of that ultimate now being down. Hmm. You can look for something like that but it looks like Pokemon is recalling. Probably to pick up there I would assume Duskblade onto the Zed here. No they are going for the Prowler's Claw instead. A little bit of extra damage I do quite like that as well. Um, and now I really want to see some more ganking. Yes, 105 CS, 110 is a good look on the Zed. But I feel like in this day and age, junglers need to be having quite a bit of impact on the map. Whether that's through jungle objectives or through ganking, I would like to see that a little bit more. And I'm also just going to call out for the fact that Godrius did go for the Divine Sunderer. As ah, opposed there you to, go. Uh, Triforce this game. To decide to go for that instead. I think part of it also comes from the fact that it is giving you that little bit of extra um, uh, magic magic ability and enhancing that on the side of it, which will allow him to mm. chew through the armor that Khan's obviously building early. So really just moving with the fact that, hey, you know, I need to take into account what I'm going to be versing, what's going to be built here. It's going to be a lot of armor. And then by going for the Sunder there, I'll be able to chew through that instead. Mm. I also quite like it because... Oh, give it a second. Oh, it's out of life. Um... Because in the war of the side, of the side laning against a Mundo, your job isn't necessarily to beat Mundo to death quickly. It's to out sustain him. Once his heal's done, if you can last longer than his healing can last, you're going to win that fight. And that's what the Divine Sunderer brings, even versus the early Bramble Vest and, of course, the Steel Plate. So I do personally quite like that one. And we'll see. Is level 10 a piece here between these two top laners? Denies the extra bit of healing. And look at this bullying. He's getting no healing reduction on Godrius, but he doesn't give a damn. He can beat the Dr. Mundo to death and can sustain wow. better than he can. Oh, Mario, yeah, can well, he that's, that's what happens. Like, Godrius, he can make this fight work if he wants to go for it. Yeah, respect. but backing away respect. there. Yeah, Cataclysm was available for Mario. You didn't want to risk that. I do quite appro I approve of that action. Yeah, the Divine Thunder is just such a big power spike that there's no way that Khan could have possibly set up to it unless he was able to finish his own Mythic in the process of that. So, even though Khan you know, was, did have his ultimate, it's got a relatively short cooldown, was able to really, um, relatively go toe-to-toe -to -toe for a short period of time. At the end of the day, the raw stats and power was just going to be too much for it, and they're going for the oh fight. My God, the CC coming through there, and then the pylon the back line there. We do see the Zed trying to get something onto the Syndra. The Syndra will oh, not die. No, never no. mind. The Shurikens. The Shurikens got him. <laughs> <laughs> even even Nuno oh, and the chat like, laughing because oh, they know what's up. <laughs> oh, that was funny there. I love how he was able to grab that at the very end there. Um, that was actually a decent play in the sense of things, but you can see the sheer damage and the advantage that Shurik had. The fact that, you know, they thought they were the ones going for the aggressive fight, and just by landing the ball, that was enough to give the knock-up ability for the last breath. That's something I didn't realize would be enough. It was enough in terms of the knockdown, and you could tell they were actually making that work, but Shurik now is probably in some trouble. 
Yeah, I don't really see them how they get out of the air alive there. Doesn't even land the tornado on the back end of it. Didn't even find what breath to do if they did. And a good goon squad and good timing because dragon number three has spawned and that should allow Canberra Matter High School to get priority over this objective that so far has been traded very evenly between the two teams. Yeah, it's just the logical common sense point at this point. You know, we've got control of the bot lane. We've managed to kill out one of the big players in Shirek as well. Everyone's here. Just grab the dragon very quickly. We'll get it relatively uncontested, which is the case. Uh, you can see here they're trying to strike back on the flip side by summoning up Shelly just to put a bit of damage in. But I think, yeah, it's nice to get that turret damage, but you're not getting any plates and you still haven't taken down the big objective. So overall, a massive trade for Cabra Matter. Yeah, the fact that you don't get plates out of the Tara push from that Riptoud, I think makes it, is the reason why it's not a worthwhile trade. Because the amount of gold you can generate out of the five turret plates, you know, an extra 900 if you get all five, is ridiculous. But if you're dropping it too late, unfortunately, you just don't get that bonus. All you get is some chip damage that it would be nice and it may help you out in the mid to late game, but it doesn't give you anything right now for the trade that was the Herald for the Dragon. I like the idea in the sense that if you do take out that mid turret, it opens up the blue buff, opens up that red buff, makes it easier to mm. secure, of course, both the dragon and the baron. At the same time, though, it, I feel like they could have possibly used it in a different stance, maybe hold on to it, look to win a team fight, and then take it away. This this time, they don't have that option to make it work anymore, and Camera Matter are slowly edging their way back into that gold lead. I mean, yeah, they lost that team fight, but with everything that they've been doing now, they're definitely well and truly in a position to compete with their component with their opponents. Hmm. So far, so good. As look what Nico and the Jacks are poking around the top half of the map. I like the attempt. Like, you know, Godrius is obviously that point of power, but I'm not so sure ganking Godrius is the solution to the current problem. You, I think, sort of maybe goon squatting the middle lane here against the low mobility Jinx might be a bit of a better option. And we are seeing them poke around, but while all this is happening, there is no one farming the bottom lane for Saint Morons. Like. You should have someone in each of your lanes. I agree with that completely. And this is that lane assignment concept coming into it. The fact that sometimes the macro play isn't down to scratch. And I think that's something that we can see Cabra Matters really picked up on. They definitely have a number of members that are going to push that into the bot lane, back away directly afterwards, and then use that tempo to move around the map. And they've got their eyes set on that mid as well. So this is actually really good. I, I don't like the fact that no one's coming to re-push that back down in that direction because that forces them to then start dealing with that lane management. And you can see they immediately have set up a lot of vision around that mid... Um, around that riverside, which means that we'll open up the Rift Herald relatively soon here for Cabra Matter. Yeah, and the the only heartbreaking thing of all that is, oh, hold on a second, oh, my oh. lord, Nugu just gets nuked from full HP to nothing, courtesy of the assassin of Diana, and that was disgusting, but I suppose when you do run a Night Harvester, it makes sense. Yeah, you're just looking to get those kills as much as you possibly can. The other thing to come into that factor as well is that, you know, Negusio isn't the tankiest person. The Syndra relatively is, has great utility, but of course is very susceptible to death if anyone looks her way. And that's exactly what happened with the assassination capability. The fact that we have a completed item um, is pretty much the case here. I think Fo uh, might be in trouble. Oh my oh, lord, what? Still. Decent. Wait, no what? way. He <laughs> might be able to get out. No, no, he's not. No, Never, he's mind. Not. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. I made sure there was no chance of that by jumping into the Cataclysm. I like the play. Uh, he shouldn't have been there. That's the first thing. It's the one place they don't have control and visual over, so that's why he was able to donate that kill across. But at the same time, very flashy. You can see why um, Point for Fun he wanted to pilot the Zed in this game. Hmm. Yeah, and they're quite comfortable on the Zed there. There's a lot of trickery that you're able to uh, do in that situation. So, I mean, if you can make it work, you make it work. As right now the game has to slow down a little bit, right? It feels a bit weird it's to say a slow game, game to be honest. I mean you compare everything mm. you know that we typically see in the HSC meta competition, most of the time these the players are bloodthirsty, but they really yeah. have been taking their time, but Harumo wants to change that a little bit and Godrius is gonna back away wisely. Yeah, I like that Godrius did get a good read on the play there. They're like, okay, they're coming top lane, and it's always risky to try outplay them under the turret. Oh no, shoot! Getting caught out there does have the death charge though. This could be something more as the Jinx might get a reset. The Miki coming in for the back line. They pop on some lands on nothing though. And this is a disaster coming through here because there is no Diana to see. 
Yeah, if Diana was there, that would have been an absolutely different turnaround. But that's part of the reason why the play worked. You can you guys can say, hey, she's bot lane. She's beginning to push out. So they're able to get, of course, the kill and the tower at the same time. But of course, you can see this is something that I think Cabramat has learned from. Hey, if everyone's there, just continue pushing. Shove it out. We'll get a little bit more back into it. The fact that Diana is going to be huge is still a big factor into these team fights. And all with, with the fact that she's not there at that time. Could have TP'd in, but probably just didn't see the opportunity at that point to make it work. Doesn't mean they are set up for this dragon. And you were talking about it before. The other day, yeah, let's get the ocean rig. Let's get a bit of a jump on this dragon race but camera matter has been really on point and making sure they take it out and look he's waiting at the moment to see if he can actually get a pick, get a pick in the process of it as well got a flank, a really intelligent here this might be a nice trap that they've set up here oh wait but they immediately oh, that's a disaster they a, a it, trap though. like this does not work without your jungler available tp coming through on the back end of it team is now piling in here but it is not so short for Cabramander without their jungler. Godrius is going to have to do God's work. They will at least try and trade their jungler for Godrius. At full health, this is divine thunder means he takes no damn damage. The dragon is still not taking out Poplas are coming through there. It will be finally secured by the good Dr. Khan, but will they Godrius. be able to win the team fight? Because Jinx Godrius. is not touched. Godrius has three, has four, given the pick to kill. He no. claims it for himself. <laughs> That was a delay trap. It was completely calculated. That was incredible on the side of it. You could tell they jumped in. They had the right idea to make it work. I feel like they pulled the trigger a little bit earlier. It wouldn't have been as clean, but that means we didn't get to see that fantastic play coming out of Godrius. He understood which players he needed to take out first. Made sure that he got rid of the ADC in Shirik. That was the first player they needed to take out to. Haruma was the other person. He completely ignored, uh, of course, Muslim and um, ignored Negocio because they had already used their abilities in the fight prior and that means he was allowed to win directly afterwards you can just that consistent damage from the divine sundra sonism sitting on the back on the back pocket just firing away the entire time doing some damage you can tell the fact that sonism was focusing calm meant they weren't really putting much attention onto it and trying to deal with godrius but as you mentioned before that divine sundra giving the sustain the fact that he's been ahead this entire time and now with that pentakill will be a complete monster Look at that, that's a completed Blade of the Ruin King. This person can take a lot of damage and recover it back very quickly. It's going to have to be a concerted, controlled effort to bring down God Godrius now. And what was most confusing, you could argue, was during the course of that fight, Godrius was able to sort of diving into the middle of it, was left untouched. Like, they were basically diving through three or four members in the back line and was the surviving member of their team. It just seems a little bit weird that they were allowed to do that in that way. So I'm interested to see um, if in the coming team fights, will they start to focus Godrius more? Because now, look at the build path. Not only have they got the Blade of the Rune King, they're starting to build towards being a bit tankier. And if you're not focusing the Jax, well, we know what happens when you don't focus Jax. Jax kills you and your entire team, in this case, gets the finishing blow on you and your entire team. And uh, you know, it's hungry for your AD carry as Shirk is just going to get nuked. There's no fighting this off, I'm afraid. Yeah, you had no chance for it. And Godrius now got like as well. We're all in the to his name. Uh, Shooter is caught though. Yeah, and engage coming in. So will go down as well. Shoot will fall. Oh. Victim, multi man from Golo Go. And another reinforcement coming through here. This is a disaster coming in from St. Lawrence. They overextended themselves. They were not ready to get rotated on. And they will lose four of their five members and only get three in return. Godrus is just being an absolute janitor. A bit late to the party, but then able to get the clean up the room. Directly afterwards, and a lot of that also comes down to the fact that Gola Gun or Gola Gunlun was able to jump in and do a pretty big ultimate that softened everyone up and basically assured it to be a victory from there. And like as you can see, Godrius now just jumping on card. That damage is monstrous. That's a full tank Mundo, and he was just chunked there by past 25% by a couple of auto attacks. Yeah, that's um. Oh, that's like right now the Jax has that got is like that ahead. is literally one of those things. Yeah, you know? like, it's like. <laughs> It's just, this is the scenario that we, you've been put into. Sometimes you miss your bus. And right now, Khan's definitely missed his. He fell into the puddle. And then Godrius decides to step on him. Yeah, Godrius is uh, pretty much the point of power here. If Godrius is there, uh, St. Morans either cannot be or their corpses are there. So you got to make your choice there. Which one are you willing to do in that situation? 
as the next dragon is spawning in about a minute's time, Mendrix, and we could see, we will, we will see another fight coming here. Potentially. Both teams are sitting on two dragons of pieces. Both dragon teams are sitting on 15 kills. The only real difference being the fact that most of the kills have been given over to Godrius, whereas the kills on their opponent's side of St. Moran's sort of is spread all over the place. But part of it as well is those shutdowns and the fact that you do get a lot of those assists as well. You can see it's actually relatively close to the gold. I mean, yeah, it's 11,000 for Godrius. Uh, 9,400 is going to be for Point for Fun and 9,700 for Gola Gun. I think they're still relatively uh, competitive for what Godrius is going to be able to put out. It's just, as you mentioned, it becomes a bit of a problem for them in the team fights. He has the TP available as well. He's playing it a bit carefully because he doesn't want to donate that 1,000 gold uh, bounty away and give a nice big influx to his opponents. But look at that! Oh, that oh, oh, I just vomited, honestly. That was that wow. Was, that, that's Diana. And that is Diana without even using their ultimate. So now, without the Syndra, a lot of zoning pressure has been removed from the table. It is now a 4v5 at the best of times, and I'm not sure that the side of St. Moran's has the well, firepower to win a 4v5. So I think yeah. quite smartly, they have backed up. I love this decision because, well, if you charge in to fight this, you charge in to die. It wasn't just like that firepower that's lacking at this point. It's also the the utility. The, I, I, we talked about it in that early stage of the game. The Syndra has the ability to set the balls up and then have a shotgun stun cone directly afterwards. Now, hmm. of course, didn't have the ability to set up because Go Lagoon said, nope, you're not going to have the chance to do this. This is going to be taken out immediately out of the... Uh, from, straight out, out of the formula, out of the calculation, just remove it from the equation. That's exactly what Golagoon did. That means they were able to step for a nice and easy dragon on the back foot of it. Godrius didn't even need to be there. I feel at that point they realized he was probably rotating down, but could easily just continue to put that pressure on that top side, um, especially with the amount of ward control that they do. I feel they could have actually got a little bit more out of it if their lane assignments and the fact that the, you know Godrius was just willing to push out will come into it. I can see him winning against both Khan and Harumu very easily here if he plays these cards right. Yeah, but they need to be a bit careful because Godrius hasn't gone for the defensive stats that I was thinking they were going for. I was thinking something like a Gargoyles would be quite nice um, to just add that extra resistance in there while they heal their way back in through the fight. But they it have... sounds so good. It would it have been disgusting. so good. But they have instead gone for, I suppose you could argue, a more traditional Wit's End, which you know just adds a ton more damage, a lot of magic resistance, and of course the attack speed, which Jax is most infamous for. Well, it's I not mean, just Jax that as well, it's it's the movement speed as well, and the fact that Jax mm. has the ability to, of course, throw a few hits out, get that boost of speed, and then start running away as well. It means that, yeah, yeah, it's nice to have the raw stats, but if you're able just to avoid your opponents or avoid death, that's way more effective, because of course, when they do decide not to go for you, you will have the ability just to do that, use that damage and take towers as well. Um, they are looking to run Roach on him here, and this is exactly what I'd like to see, but... Of course, he's just being so careful. Godrius is literally, to be honest, more too cautious to a fault. I wouldn't mind him putting himself out there a little bit more and, and getting a bit of a risk because it does mean that the rest of the team is going to be in a much more comfortable position to get the rest of these objectives. I can see that. Oh, give us a second Ooh. as Maru is getting caught up. But Shoots is now getting everything thrown around. TP coming to the back end, but they've already lost the support. Maru now trying to buy time there, but it does not matter as they are nuked down. The lack of a jungle is a problem now as Golo Go is hungry. The flash for flash there. Pop Blossom forced out a Muslim. But Nico will get out without a problem. But the pro biggest thing is Haru is dead. There is no smite to contest this Baron taking. And you can tell they're going for it straight away as well. The big thing here, though, is that, of course, there is a lot of ultimates. Specifically, looking at Shurik is coming in now that can jump in. You've got the Syndra that can possibly make it work. But without any vision, you can see they're just going to wisely let them take it away. It's, this is really rough now because Godrius will have that so much pushing power. And you can see they're beginning to push not just the top lane, but the bot lane. I like the idea of this. They can really put a massive amount of pressure on right now, especially because Harumi is still down. Yeah, it's, it's not safe to look for this contest, and even with four people lurking in the wings, Godrius, I think this is wise to back up here. You're yes. strong, but you're far from invincible. No Guardian Angel, no real active um, in your kit to go for, and you're even building, instead of you know going for um, an Executioner's Calling, going for the defensive Grievous Wound itemization. 
So part of it comes down to the length of time that takes. So you can see he's come back into the fight. Oh, oh my god, there's there's no chance. Yeah, in a one v one, definitely in Godrius's favor. In a one v four, slightly less so. Yeah, it, it, that does come down to the fact that you've managed to take the tower. You can see they've been positioning, they're posturing to actually get themselves ready for that four main gank. So you go, yep, yeah, time for me to get on out of here and make it work. And that sets up all this, oh. all this, everything else around. Look, they're just trying to get Yasuo, but a nice win ward. He's going for a steal. Oh my god, that was beautiful. And so is so is dead. What a beautiful play in the middle lane. And oh, sure. Shira, no grievous wounds able to stop that kind of damage output from the double life steal of Shira's Yasuo. Yeah, that was really well played. They understood exactly what needed to be done. Was able to jump over the chompers with the flash, and then with no defenses, immediately remove Sonism. At the same time as well, the fact that it was able to use the sustain and get back and get a return kill in the Go Lagoon. And at the same time, that stopped the pressure top. And this is what I dislike about Godrius's play. Yes, he's there for the team. Yes, he's got 10 and 1 too. But if he could have just kept on pushing that top lane, they'd possibly we would be threatening that top in here better right now. Sometimes you can be helping your team to a fault. Yeah, but there isn't too much of a punishment because the next dragon is only spawning in 10 seconds and everyone will be available. The only person who might be a little bit late is Go Lego because they are going to be spawning after the objective, but it looks like neither team has set up preemptive vision and they are simply now setting up reactive vision saying, okay, the objective's up now, let's start setting up for it and we will have a fight because it is only one dragon away from Soul for Camera Matter. It is to set it up, but I'm a bit worried. Yeah, I mean, look, Shoot's coming in there, but too late for the party. Yeah, Shoot's will be forced to run away, but Camera Man is simply... Could kill, they could just get the kills, though. Yeah, they could. Godrius is definitely looking for it. Has access There's to Flash. Flank. Flash Leap Strike is available if they're hungry for it. You could definitely look to CC out multiple members, but it doesn't look like... They're just going to catch up Khan, who did take different pathing than the rest of the team, you know. You've always got to, when you're traveling with a pack, you must follow the path of the pack. But instead... Yeah, they still the Baron here, and they've still got the backs. They could push in and get this inhibitor very quickly. They're looking for it right now. They do have the man advantage, so they can definitely look to try for some. And go taking up the turret a little bit, but the wave clear from the Syndra is just pretty damn good. And I think they're not going to get anything from it, simply delaying the game for another five minutes. Yeah, they just managed to get back in time. I really, really prefer to have Cabin Matter just decided to be a little bit quicker on that play, really be a bit more decisive, really use that Baron buff. Um, if they did that, they could have easily just pump, pumped up that pump that tower right on down and then be able to win the team fight directly afterwards with the foot with the one man advantage especially with how big godrius is so i feel like the fact that they're elongating this is not really helping their calls i mean yes you are ahead but 54 to 60 doesn't start to feel as much and of course they're tail to tail with those dragons as well so the fact that these rotations have been very quick coming out from our red side their ability to make that work is is be beginning to work in their favor and they're being a the ability to be more decisive also means that their proactivity is being rewarded. Yeah, surviving. But they are 6,000 gold behind Mendrix. That is a pretty big hill to climb here. Um, I think... I say I think I know where this 6,000 gold is. If we look at the gold difference, that 6,000 gold is in the top lane. Exactly 6,000 gold between our two top lane is here. Give, so. give or take a couple hundred. Give or take, give or a, couple take a couple hundred. But it is hundred. pretty much there. It is pretty much there. Uh, but the other thing as well is obviously um, what these champions do. Uh, if it was a gold disparity in the opposite direction, it would feel really rough for Godrius. Uh, but because it's an opposite gold in the direction of Khan, Khan doesn't really feel it as much. He's still going to be a pretty beefy champion and have the ability to get into the middle of the team fight and be a wall. That's essentially what he needs to be. Um, that should buy time for the setup, which means that they do have the ability to try and put, so again, a, con a concentrated, concerted effort into dealing with Godrius. He has to go down first, and that has to be their trigger point for their next team fight. Uh, if they're unable to find him, they will lose that team fight. So. A lot of it rests on them being proactive, getting these warding around the map, but Cabra Matters are just doing such a good job of dropping their wards down, keeping their vision, and making it impossible to find that opportunity. Yeah, as long as they play safe for the next couple of minutes, they should be fine, but all it can take is one slip-up. You and I have seen it many a times in the past, mm -hmm. but just one slip-up, one misposition, one moment of not thinking through exactly what it is you're doing can result in your death. But look at the positioning of St. Moron's. They are playing back. They're not pushing up beyond the tier twos themselves, which I think is the correct decision. That's how you play it safe. You do not 
want to overextend yourselves and you just throw Khan forwards to test out for vision. If someone throws some crowd control at Khan, he laughs because he's Dr. Mundo and then retreats. So there is a little yep. bit of a freedom you've got going with the good Doctor leading the way. And what I really like as well is you can see they're beginning to put their wads out where they can. They're not going to be caught out at any particular point. It's the entrances that they still have control, which basically draw a line to where their towers are. So you can see they're making it work. But oh. there's, the, there's the damage, my god. <laughs> yeah, double stopwatch there. Flash in over the wall. Golo Go is just caught out of position. The sacrificial lamb, but the Baron will be secured. The Jinx Knight on the back end of it as well. Solicism having a good time after that. That was a fantastic shot. And you can tell Girl Lagoon exactly knew what he was doing. He wanted to get in there, stop any real backs, basically put the pressure onto him because even though he may have died, even if there wasn't that return kill, the Baron was completely worth it. Bo fancies his ability here to make something happen. Yeah, I think the scouting for the red buff was not able to secure it, but I like the aggression out of the Zed there. You've got a lot of safety in the fact that you've got it's soul point. a lot of cooldown. Hmm? It's soul point. And that dragon's uh, up in a minute. It's, and now, with the Baron in their hands, does that give Cabramatta an inherent advantage if they actually, you know, push the waves in and get proper vision control? Or are we going to see that, oh yeah, dragon's spawning up, let's just sort of walk at it, set up vision while it's spawning and, and hope for the best? We well, can see they've set up the top side and they have pushed in mid to a degree, so not their bot lane, but I really like that they put a lot of pressure on making sure they've got this entire area in the top side jungle, sorry, the bottom side jungle warmed up and they went for a flank. Yeah, and they get it immediately, Nuke down Nuga, as the rest of the team diving in their high return by space, but it just does not matter. As Pokemon diving on the back line, the Pop Blossom is nice for a zoning tool, but unfortunately That's the it. damage output is just not there in this situation Khan was the final member of his team and he will fall just as easily yeah it's insanity off the back pocket there you can tell that it was a team effort that came into it but a lot of it was bridged by the fact that Godrigus was able to do a lot more just to keep everyone alive and that was actually them just really taking control of them but they, they, they didn't even want to finish that game they knew <laughs> it was done and done Dusted the moment they won that team fight. And look at the other thing they took into account here as well. They completely sacked the dragon and went straight for the throw. They were going for the win off the back end there. And they understood they had more than enough time. I mean, look at those death timers. 11 was going to be the most soonest that would be coming through. And of course, they've got that Baron. It was said and done. Yeah, there was nothing they could do to fight off in the end there from Simrons and Canberra Matter. Not the cleanest game we've ever seen out of them. Um, it didn't look as well as we'd like mm -hmm. to. Their bottom lane of Stoicism and Shoots really struggled into that particular matchup. But Godrius on the Jacks was able to get online, bully out his lane opponent, get a massive tempo advantage in this game. 13-1-4 on the top laner here. What a really strong performance out of them and mm -hmm. they will be our Optus and Torrens University player of the game and after taking they took control of the top half of the map and then sort of used that and of course the pentakill maybe yep. uh, to sort of just help the team get back into it recover the dragon situation and set up for the final fight and again, it comes back to that pick and ban before everything even really took place. You could tell they got the Jacks as the first pick because I understand that Godrius does have the ability to really pop off in these team fights. And he, he did stand up for the team. He did exactly what he needed to do. And the other thing to come into it as well is Girl Lagoon did a fantastic job. I feel a phenomenal job looking for those flanks, understanding how this Diana champion worked. Without that, I don't think Godrius would have had such an easy time getting the cleanup duty, duty afterwards because everyone was soft up thanks to that diana yeah some really good teamwork coming out of the sides of camera meta but uh that is gonna be our second game over at meta hsc done and dusted but guys do not go anywhere there is a third game waiting in the wings that is going to be uh de la Cell facing up against king grove north high school for the final week here and this match is super important as it will have severe impacts on the standings coming into finals guys so do not go anywhere we'll be back in only a couple of minutes